Real Sports Fan Podcast, uh, back for another episode. Uh, it is Monday, May the 10th, 2021 at 7.13 p.m. And we definitely appreciate everybody that's tuning in to Season 4, Episode 12. And we've got a very special guest in the building. Great friend of mine, go back a long ways. You might know her as Wandy, Shawanda Hazard. Wandy, how you doing? I'm good. What's happening? Man, nothing much, nothing much. Just trying, trying to take it one day at a time. That's all we can do. Yeah, that's that's anybody. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so let. So I definitely appreciate you coming on. I I just want to say for uh, if it's your first time, you know, obviously you're on the show, but listening or anybody else out there for the first time, what we basically try to do on the show is, is really try to give people their flowers now uh, and really honor people that's made an impact uh, in the community. Uh, uh, in 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 sports uh, in Easton, uh, in on the Eastern yeah. Shore, you know, no, number of different things, you know. So you're one of those people that that I I thought about you even last year when I was when I was you know doing the show, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I, I locked you in, and, and I appreciate you, you know, taking a little bit of your time, and and you know, like you say, you wanted the the great state that walked through Easton and came through there, and and you're well known in the community. Uh, the, the the flower. The, I put the flower today. I, I'm getting a lot of likes, shares, and all that. So I said, "Let's rock out. Let's rock yeah, out." Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah, social. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. So we're gonna we're gonna get into it. Um, uh, first and foremost, a lot of people that I know, you know, we grew up not far from each other. Uh, right down bottom, you know, in the '90s when it when it was on the pop in the east, and it was a a great time to, to be alive you know, be a kid during that time. So so first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about about growing up on the shore, but more importantly, even growing up down bottom. Well, um, I can, I'm kind of from the hill. My family is really from the hill. Um, mm-hmm. We moved from the hill to Limbrook Court, and then we went down bottom. So the majority of my life was spent. Like, that's who made me, like, that era, that mm-hmm. down yeah. bottom. But um, I don't know. Like I met, I met a lot of cool people. Um, you know, as far as you, you and my brother kind of connected. So that just yeah. grew up and, and um, yeah. I don't know. Like just that's that's where I discovered sports. So um, I think I was about eleven, twelve, and I started playing basketball. Cause most people they play basketball early on, but I didn't. I didn't yeah. have interest in sports, but I was always a tomboy. So I'm like, when we moved there, like we had the crate courts, we would go up docks and take the crates and cut the crates out. So I was always bigger than everybody. So I would always dunk on everybody and do all kind of crazy stuff. But um, like during that period, like, you know, my mom fell on hard times and stuff. So I definitely got to see a lot and experience a lot and it changed me. You know, and um, I kind of went into middle school, low self-esteem, you know, good grades. And then my seventh grade year is just like, nah, I want something different. I want to experience a different life. So started hanging out, not listening, doing a lot of dumb stuff. But meanwhile, still playing sports. Um, I, I don't know, like. I shook a lot of peer pressure in that area also mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. as you know, we lived on Blake street. So one street over was Port street. And that's where, mm-hmm. you know, you could get any drug you wanted on Port street. And all my friends had started smoking weed and a couple of them started selling drugs. And I was like, um, nah, I don't want that. And then I'm like, y'all smoking weed and y'all just be all drowsy and sleepy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nah. So I I just never, I just never like fell into that because I'm the type of person, like I want to lead. Like if I ever Mm -hmm. smoked weed, I wanted it to be because that's what I wanted to do. So not because my friends started and they wanted me to do it. So like definitely that, that, that time frame right there, it's kind of like really made me who I am. And it started building character because before that I didn't have a voice. You know, and nobody really knew who I was. So, um, yeah, 
That's real though. What you said, and you said a lot. You said a lot that I want to unpack, even in just that opening. What you said, you know, and, and even a lot that 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 kids and people can take when you're talking about first of all peer pressure. When, like you said, I mean, you got you got Port Street, you got Blake, you got Glenwood. You know, for anybody from East, and, you know, we got the the Elks and the Legion right there, and in in the nineties, like you said, Port Street, you know, drugs and things like that. So, you know, you talking about peer pressure and making decisions. You know that's real. You know, and that that was that was you know one thing I'm glad you touched on. Uh, and then talking about leadership and having a voice, and, and that's one thing I can attest to. You definitely was always a leader. Like that's one thing I I, I give you that. You know, you always stood out. You know, a, a, amongst other people. You know, and 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 I and I you know I was younger, but I watched. You know, what I'm saying you know I was a kid, but you know I watched. You know, and we start naming some of the people. I mean, you and and Ronnie and. Wayne and Tavon and Terrell and Man Stewart. You talk about the Creek Course play back behind Kevin Washington crib. Uh yeah. had, had Juice, KJ, Jawan Turner, Smalls. I mean, D- Big Dion. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, great times. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. yeah great times. Great times. So, you know, you talking about the bottom, you know, during that during that time, and I'm glad to see and even what they're you know, trying to do in some of the areas down bottom, you know, with, with housing and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm just glad you hit on that, on that peer pressure, but talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, you talked about sports and kind of being a, uh, not necessarily a late bloomer, but you started late, you know, like you said, you know, seventh, eighth grade. Did you, when was the first time you played, cause I was trying to think of this, uh, organized ball. Was it, was it before high school or prior to high school? Um, it was high school. No, actually, uh, I didn't. I I, I don't. I, I can't really count this. In middle school, they had like a team, and um, but I ended up not playing. They had like one mm-hmm. game, but I I couldn't really adjust. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and and my mind frame really wasn't like on like this is what I want to do because we had to get up like mm-hmm. five or six in the morning and be mm-hmm. at the school to practice prior to school because we couldn't practice mm-hmm. after. So it was like mm-hmm. I kind of gave up on that. And um, organized ball started in my 10th grade year of high school. Um, I didn't play as a freshman. Uh, you know, I was still kind of trying to find who I was. And I wasn't sure if I was going to take the sports route. Um, mm-hmm. my Roger Potter, he was like, Nee, so what you going to do? Are you going to play basketball? So I'm thinking, I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. I I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. You know, but even to get to that point where I had to play, you know what I'm saying? I had like some behavioral issues, like where Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like the class clown. Like I wanted to be the center. So I had to just take in the focus that academics had to come first. So if I was always getting kicked out of class, then my grades would be impacted. So I guess you could say I did a, like, what is it called? A 180. So Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. yeah by surprise because they got you got this freshman and she just doing whatever she want to do she might go to sleep she might do some work but um as far as like grades wise like i, I only failed one class and um i ain't gonna tell y'all what that is but <laughs> um like i just like i just i just put my focus on it and you know my first year i wasn't somebody who you know, really made that big of a difference. I was I was the unsung hero because mm-hmm. I wasn't really that big of a score because, you know, I'm still trying to adjust. Um, so I was more like the rebounder or might block shots, you know, or somebody might shoot the ball and I might get a bunch of offensive rebounds. So, like, my aspect of my game started there, like the Dennis Rodman. That's who I always mm-hmm. wanted to be. That's who I idolized, not Michael Jordan. Um, so let's say after that is um, my junior year, and that's the year that I did receive Player of the Year. Um, mm-hmm. My uncle got me a YMCA membership. So mm-hmm. I worked on my game that whole summer. So I came back a totally different player. And I had confidence because – you know, that first year kind of like built me up. So, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was, it was, I don't know. It was just it was like crazy. Like my story, like to look back on 
like the things that I thought about and the things that I valued and it wasn't school and it wasn't sports, you know, mm. I, I just wanted to be known and, it, and, it, and mm. it, I didn't care if it was sports. I didn't care if it was negative. I didn't care. Like I just wanted people to know who I was. Um, Man, that's real. Yeah. Basketball just kind of like, you know, it kind of like pushed, pushed me in the right direction. You know, like sports can can kind of save you, and yeah. it yeah. saved me for a yeah. while because I dodged a lot of bullets. And you know, like as far as like drug use and different stuff like that, I always told myself, like I'm an athlete, I can't put that kind of stuff in my body. So mm -hmm. like I dodged a lot because you know I got offered weed and um, just about anything. You know, even yeah. the opportunity to sell drugs at an early age. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I never really thought that I would ever graduate high school because I never saw that in my cards. It wasn't even nothing that I aimed for. And mm -hmm. um, if it really wasn't, if I didn't play basketball, I probably would have dropped out of school. I, I was uninterested in school. Yeah, your story is, is even in what you share so far, like it, it's amazing because even if you go back, and I thought, you, and, and I thought that you know, you didn't play organized until 10th grade, which, you, you know, you said I was right. And that's what makes it even more impressed that, and I know you say you didn't make that big of an impact, but you, you ended up making the second team as a sophomore, your first year playing ball, second team all base eye. So like you say, even though you wasn't necessarily the scorer yet, you always was a rebounder. And that come from, you know, playing with the guys, crate courts, elbows, jumping, you know, we always had that. So like you said, and I remember the Dennis Robin guy, I used to like Pippen. You know what I'm saying? So I remember those conversations as well. But, you know, even though you said that, like you said, you still set the the blueprint for what was to come. And we're going to get to your junior year, you know, but what was to come for that. But but let me let me ask you this about your sophomore year. How was it playing on that team? You had uh, Coach Wicker, uh, Co Coach Phillips uh, at the time. She uh, was her first year, actually, coaching. She was a system before that. And then you go coming in as a sophomore, you got – Tia Bell, senior, Toya Brooks, senior, uh, uh, Tara's coming in with you also, uh, sophomore. Uh, you got uh, uh, Gretchen Kwasnick. Uh, she was a real good scorer. Uh, uh, Monica Mulder, uh, of course, Brooke Barrier. I mean, y'all had a y'all had a squad. I mean, what was your – I mean, I know it was your first year playing, but what was your thoughts on that team, you know, that, that sophomore year? Uh, I just felt like that, that team mm -hmm. – um, we could have done more, you know what I mean? But um I don't I don't know. Like we that that team was bomb. Like Y'all was talented, did, yeah. Right. We did all right, but I feel like um I feel like we could have been better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um but I, I feel like had I had more scoring in me, I feel mm -hmm. like it could have mm -hmm. pushed us a little in a better direction because even though you had all of those players, Gretchen really carried the team. And, yeah, uh, she did. Uh, she made first team that year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her and, and Brooke kind of, they, they kind of like put the points on the board. Um, yeah. Monica was the center. Um, she, she did a lot of rebounding. And I don't even think basketball wasn't even her first sport. That was just something right. that, that she, she did. did. <laughs> like over six foot she probably was like six one yeah so, you yeah. know even with that like had she you know had some more developmental you know well fundamentals um mm -hmm. could have could have impacted also but you know that you know you got to respect that wasn't her sport they wanted her to play mm -hmm. you know but she yep. she gave it what she had and uh, you know that was cool but that that team was um it was good. It was, it was, it was the mm. best, but that mm. wasn't even my, my favorite team was that team with all of those scores. My team was the team um, that we had a lot of first year players, which was my senior yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. I thought so. I want to get to that. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that too, because you, you, you're my, you're my mind. Cause I was going to ask you that. So, and I will, I will say this to get to, to y'all credit. As deep as y'all was, y'all did go through a lot of injuries that year too. You know, Toya A and T ended up getting hurt. Brooke got hurt towards the end of the year. Um, you know, so you know, y'all y'all did have a lot of a lot of injuries, but you guys still fought. 
won, won your first round playoff game, and then you lost a one point to uh, North Carolina. Y'all swap them in the regular season, and you lost to them, you know, in the playoffs. But so, so talk to me a little bit. Now you talked about, I think you said with your uncle, they gave you the YMCA membership before your junior year. Yep. Talk Hilbert. about the work. The, 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 Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Talk, talk about the the work you put in because obviously we're gonna get to your numbers, but I mean it was a big leap, you know, scoring wise. Rebounding even went up too. But so talk about the work you put in that summer, you know, from sophomore to junior year. Um, that summer, um, I actually lived at the Y. Like, I would go to the Y mm-hmm. around eleven or twelve, and I would kind of stay at the Y until at least seven o'clock. And um, my day would consist of. I would go, I would lift weights, I would uh, run on a treadmill, and then I would play basketball. Um, mm-hmm. I had started um, I had started the opposite way. I had started playing basketball first, then trying to lift weights. So I felt like um, the weight training should come first. So that's I like what that. I started doing that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. A lot of kids, a lot of people don't know that either, about that, you know, that weight. So I always say, if I knew that earlier you know we always play 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 and something they used to tell us uh you know the weights might throw your shot off or stuff like that but the weights ain't gonna throw your shot off because you get done lifting you're gonna go shoot yeah. <laughs> you know yeah they they some people used to say that and you kind of listen yeah. to what they say but um the impact that weights had on my game was was crucial you know mm-hmm. i wasn't i wasn't really like a big solid player like I'm not as solid as I was you know I'm, I'm, I wasn't solid then as I am now so I was mm-hmm. a good like 160 but that was because I had a lot of muscle mass and but to see me I look really small um and it, it would shock people like when I was set picks and stuff that they would just be like smacked you know what mm-hmm. I mean but it was it was the weights because the mm-hmm. average woman you never really see them lift weights unless they're made to. So yep. for me, that was just something that I added because I wanted to be stronger. I wanted to be faster. I wanted to jump higher. So it's not that hard to outdo a woman that's not doing those things that you're doing. So mm-hmm. wasn't many people, wasn't probably no women in the weight room with me. I was in the weight room with all guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a difference. You're right. And, and and I even got even vivid memories in my head right now. You know, you talk about those weights. One thing about you, when you got the ball, if you got a full hit of steam, it was, no, they wouldn't get in front of you. You know what I mean? No, if you no. if you could take that what that one two dribble and you going up, they they wasn't they wasn't gonna take that 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 contact, you know. So so your point is very valid, you know, that that you know, weights, you know, make it make a difference. You know, on any level and and in any sport, you know. So I'm glad that you you shared that. And talk about that that team. You know, your your junior year because, um, uh, you know, obviously you you end up being player of the year, and I'll, I'll throw some of your numbers out. But you know, you guys still had a nice team coming back. Like you said, you Tara, Brooke, uh, uh, the uh, Monica Mulder. Uh, you guys still had a, a solid team, and you had some younger players you know, coming in. So what was your outlook like, you know, at the beginning of that season? Um, man, I, I just, I didn't really have an outlook because I just felt mm-hmm. like, um, I was just going to leave. And mm-hmm. it, it wasn't even like, I don't, I don't want to say it was like selfish, but I just knew that that was my year. It's like, I feel mm-hmm. like I worked so hard and I put in so much time that I was just going to go ahead and, and show my new talents, my new skills. Yep. And, um, like, seeing the team that we had compared to the team before that, you just kind of knew, like, I'm like, Tara, man, we're we, we going to have to do it, you know? And yeah. I, think, I think I actually replaced Monica on defense – as the center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that was because I could jump and um, I could move a little faster, you know what I mean, than her in that box. So um, they kind of like pushed me into that. So, um, but mm-hmm. th- that team, you know what I mean? Like we went, we went to, I was at the playoffs. Yeah. And, and now nah, Brooke actually got injured. 
Nor got hurt that year. Another injury, yeah, y'all. That year. And yep. um, it was towards the end. So we, we didn't have mm-hmm. her for the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That hurt that hurt too because just just the, I'm sure you remember just to drop through memory. Going into the playoffs before she got hurt, y'all was on a ten game winning streak. Ten game winning streak. Y'all ended up finishing the regular season thirteen and seven. Uh basically the, the, the same record with, with, with Queen Anne's and, and Colonel, which I want to get to, y'all y'all robbery, but they had a better percentage points, obviously in a in base out record, so they, they got in. But you guys had a, a, a big time winning streak. But I wanna I wanna talk about this, the 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 robbery with Easton and Queen Anne's because, you know, obviously <laughs> uh, Mika always talk, talk about it. And then yeah. I, I remember a lot of those games and I remember, you know, uh, seeing you playing those games. And the thing about it is it didn't matter whose record was what. And I'm, and I'm talking about your sophomore year, your junior year, your senior year. They was always going to get y'all best shot. And I don't know if you remember, but your junior year, if they had beat y'all, this is the last game in Easton. If they had beat y'all, they would have they would have went to the Bayside game. Y'all stopped them from getting there. Y'all y'all beat them. I mean, you had a you you I think y'all you broke in uh uh Tara, I think y'all could buy for uh fifty five that game. I mean was was just killing. And and you talked about the significance of that game because that Robert but talk about the Robert a little bit with Queen Anne. So you guys really went at it a lot. Well, I, see, that was their rivalry, you know. That was their, it, yeah. <laughs> You on the opposite team to me, you you the opposition. So yeah, I, I, I yeah. don't even know you on the court. So um it was something like I guess like Easton, I don't know, like uh I think Queen Anne's had somebody that was that was really, really good. Um I wanna say I I think kind of wanna point toward like my sophomore year. Um okay. I don't I don't even know where it came from. And and then it just mm-hmm. kind of went on and on, but shit. We had we was rivals with Colonel and um right Cambridge and North Dorchester. Yeah. <laughs> Cambridge used to give us a hard time. Um, <laughs> they, they even Cambridge had like a good squad at one point and mm-hmm. um, yeah, like yeah. I mean any any team any local teams like we just kind of went at it. Queen Anne's was really really good. They had a really really good team. Um, Colonel had a really really good team. So I I guess like. Yep. Out of the, the the north, I guess it was like, yeah, we those these mm-hmm. the ones that we need to go gear toward. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I know Keena played in 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 Denton, but I, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm trying kind of. I think they had a kind of good squad too, but I think they mm-hmm. had some inexperience. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, like any team we played, man, it was just crazy. Yeah. But Queen Anne's definitely because um, I feel like. Me, my team, Easton, Colonel, and Queen Anne's, I feel like we were the best three out of, you know, mm-hmm. our conference. So, yeah, always sure. try to knock somebody off the totem pole. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I, was, mm-hmm. I, I didn't create the rivalry. It just, it was there when I got there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's well said. Well, and, and like you said, one thing about playing at Easton is everybody wants to beat you. I don't care if it's St. Michael's, you know, can't count. I mean, you know, everybody wants to be East. And so, like you said, there are a lot of robberies out there that sometimes won't even know they're robberies. You know, it, it won't know until after the fact, you yeah. know. So, yeah, that, uh, that's that's what's up. But y'all, y'all have some some classic games, you know, uh, like you said, the game, that game, and it was another another close thing y'all had that y'all went overtime. So, y'all really battled. But uh, at the end of the year, uh, I think you was like top five in scoring that year. Uh, but you you continue rebounding, uh, averaging 17 points and 14 rebounds a game uh, to to get the player of the year. Now, tell me the story about how you found out you were player of the year. Cause I feel like you shared this not too long, maybe on Facebook. It was something. Maybe I'm wrong, but it was something I seen you shared about how you found out you got player of the year. Can you, can you touch on that? I actually, um, I want to say my mom had went to the store. And somebody was like, tell your daughter congratulations. And she like, <laughs> and they was like, she played a year. And I'm like, huh? And so <laughs> he come to me and I'm like, well, go get the paper. So we get the paper. And <laughs> the paper. So we, we buy like two newspapers and we go on. And that's that's how I knew. But, you know, they come and they take your pictures, but they don't say you're going to be player of the year. Right. Like you know that you made the, the first base team or whatever. Yeah. So the, yeah. I'm like, 
okay, you know, I made the team. Oh, I, I, I just was like, okay, whatever. And um, that that was like, like, dang, like, I, you know, just has <laughs> read the paper, we would have missed it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how I found yeah. out. Man, that was dope. That was dope. And like you said, that just goes to, you know, for people listening, when you're talking about hard work, I don't care if it's in sports, I don't care if it's at your job, I don't care if it's at around your house, but it, it tells the work that Wandy put in <clears throat> because you, you, you heard her say that she wasn't necessarily the score her sophomore year, but then you go from second team, not just the first team, but the player of the year. So, I mean, that, that was, that was amazing itself. And, uh, uh, Brooke also made our uh, first team, you know, that year, um, you know, as well. And, and uh, you guys had a great season, you know, great season, even though, like you said, with the injury, you know, early playoff exit, but a, a great season and great junior year. So uh, I'm sure after a season like that, you know, obviously it's pumping you up and getting you ready, you know, for your last year, for your senior year. But I, before we get to your senior year, I, I, I want to talk about that summer again. Was that the summer that that you guys qualified uh, and played uh, AAU? Uh, was that the year Rob Pitts coach y'all? Y'all had a nice nice team. You, Tan Pitts. Uh, yeah, you, you had some girls from uh, uh, Mardell in Washington. Uh, yeah. Tara, talk a little bit about that about the AAU. How that helped? Well, basically, we, we didn't have a lot of games. We we had a lot of practices, but um, mm-hmm. because it wasn't a lot of uh, girls teams we kind of it kind of like fell on us so we we had the game and it was for the championship we didn't even notice and um wow. we won we had um i think our name is crystal rogers and yeah um, yeah because from, rogers, yeah. uh i want to say chris field or somewhere down that way and um yeah washington mm-hmm. washington yeah yeah yep. um so she kind of led us because you know that's what she did she was point guard and she kind of, we just kind of like follow her suit. We continued to play our game, but we kind of let her lead because she was a little older than us and she had a little more mm-hmm. experience than some of us. So we kind of rode her back and um, we went to Texas to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> wasn't we wasn't ready for that. Like we played it. Um, it was one girl, uh, I can't even remember her name. Tara would remember. It's, it's two of them. One uh-huh. of them played that, that next year. One of them went to play uh, for North Carolina. And um, oh, wow. it, was a, it was a young girl, and she was probably, she was under 10, or maybe under 12. I'm going to say under 12. Nah, she was younger. Uh-huh. She was, I want to say that girl was like eight or nine, maybe even wow. 10. And she was really, really short, but she ended up being like a point guard for the Tennessee Bulls. And I can't oh wow, remember. I think I know you're talking about. I think got, I know you're talking about. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told Tara. Tara was guarding her, and Tara was kind of like, "I oh, want she a kid." I'm like, "Take the ball from her." What do you mean we try? To- <laughs> <laughs> <Come> yeah. <on. laughs> the game, they they were beating us so bad that they put her in. They gave her clock. And she wasn't even like you know what I mean. You, at any yeah. team, you can play up. You just can't play down. Yeah. So her exactly. Age, they just disrespected us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 you could see, like you said, the the, the difference in in talent was it that significant or just was it you know what what was it you know was it just the talent overall they had was just more different. No, actually. I, I, I feel like I feel like our team didn't mesh. Um, mm, y'all had like, time, enough games. Yeah, yeah. So I feel you saying. Mm-hmm. So I feel like them those games they they probably all played together from you know grade school or whatever. So it's like mm-hmm. I feel like our team kind of was thrown together, and um, it 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 just it showed because the chemistry mm-hmm. was different. You know, of course. I'm gonna vibe with Tara and and uh, and Tamara because you know those yeah. are my friends. So mm-hmm. we all played, but then you add these other people, and it's different because you know yeah. where they might depend on me in a certain way. These other players don't. So you oh. know they it it just we just didn't mesh. I don't think. And yeah, um, some people might not have taken it as serious as others. But it, it it was a learning experience because you look around and it's scouts everywhere. It's colleges mm-hmm. from everywhere. So that goes to show you, like, 
like the the girl that went to North Carolina, like she wasn't mm-hmm. even that good, and she was she was like um, she was strong, and she was mm-hmm. short, but um, she played the post, and they kind of like knew who she was, and they knew her buzz. I didn't because I didn't really watch sports. I just I just you mm-hmm. know played. Um, I did start when when the WNBA came out. Like I started watching that, but it just right. like all knew who she was. I didn't know who she was. Man, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that. Just you know, but like you said, you know, being able to mesh and chemistry and and cohesiveness, you know, all that all that means something. And for what y'all was able to do in that short period of time, though, is commendable because most times it takes a couple of years, you know to get in jail when you got all these different areas, you know, forget just the north side of the base side. You're talking south south side too. <laughs> so, you know, but it, it takes time. It takes time. But that's definitely a, a awesome summer to catapult you and prepare you for your senior year because once you get senior year, I mean I'm sure you and Tara talked about it. You guys, you know, y'all gonna have some heavy lifting, you know, to do uh with the people you lost, uh and then just the young pair that that was coming in. So uh, and, and I don't think you got to see, but um, I was late going today, but I, I put up some articles on my stories. You had to check out afterwards, but you and Tara combined for some big, <laughs> some big games that year. I mean, combined for 44 and, and 45 and 50. So you had to check that out. But but talk about your mindset, your mindset, you know, going to your senior year, uh, knowing, you know, what you had and what's going to have to do. Well, um, I don't know. I was always in really, really good shape. Um Mm-hmm. I, I used to run a lot. So like um some of the girls that we had now prior no, I'ma say compared to that my junior year, like I just like basically just I just would run. Like she'd be like, Y'all got 20 laps. So everybody like, ah, I just start running. <laughs> and like to see like my senior year, those girls from like I don't know, soccer and like whatever is the the fall sports, I guess lacrosse, they was in mm-hmm. really good shape, but the the talent wise, it was shaky. You know, some of them had never played. And it was yep, like never. Um like what what the hell is we gonna do? Yep. So mm-hmm. you know, instead of like beating them up mentally and for what they didn't have, like I just started uplifting them as much as I could. Um so- it, it, it it's like they see their best player perform every night at at her best um mm-hmm. whether it's i whether i gave them 10 points that was the best that was i was at my best that was the best i could give them that night so mm-hmm. for me to be encouraging and not really saying damn y'all suck it, it kind of right. helped build their character and um that year um we were at uh it was a colonel game i don't know who they was playing i, I, I want to say easton because sometimes the girls and the guys wouldn't play on the same night um mm-hmm. and so we started trash talking with tamra mind you tamra's our friend so no mm-hmm. we're not gonna fight we're just talking crap right <laughs> it, it, it like it's like it just ignited everybody thought that we were about to fight so um, I want to say, I, I forgot the lady name. Um, she fell down and twisted her ankle. So the whole day, we pumped for this game. Because we like, yo, we going to beat them. It's on, it's on, it's on. So they called us in, like, fourth period. Like, me and Tara, like, asking us about what happened. I'm like, yeah, we talk trash, but that's our friend. It was never a situation right. where we were going to physically fight each other. Right. And they suspended us for that game. We couldn't we couldn't attend the game and um we couldn't be oh, on wow. school. So however, I live right around the corner from the school. So we went and we went around the back and kind of watched some of the game towards the end. And um uh, you know, that game is what built their confidence because they didn't even actually get blown out. We was expecting them to lose by 30 some points. I don't even think it was I don't even think it was 20. You know what I mean? It wow. was like we really didn't expect them to even put no points on the board. And 
it was that game that that built their confidence is they had their two best players not playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it, it was it was just a learning experience, like how people can uh, misconstrue what's going on. Like y'all yep. feel like because somebody is yelling that it's going to be a fight, mm-hmm. and it's not. It you know those yep. those, those, those we were friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's in life. I, and I like as you say, because that's in life. Period. People misconstrue things. Like you yeah. said, someone raised their voice, and people then they gonna fight, or just so many different things. The way things look, they don't look as they actually are. You know. So right. yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm glad you 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 put it like that. But that that now it makes sense because while I was looking at that, I was wondering why y'all wasn't playing. So thanks for sharing that story because I I I didn't know that or forgot about it or whatever. Yeah. But wow, I did I did not know that. They, I don't know if they said for disciplinary reasons that we weren't playing, but it it really was um. It really was like taken way out of context, and it, of yeah. course, we were students. They didn't listen to us. They listened to whoever, you know, said whatever they said, and it, it was like kind yeah. of messed up because it it really wasn't that serious. The people made yeah. it serious, so you know. Yeah. What person would know that they have a game the next night, try to fight at another game? You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. like that. No, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it wasn't that type. I, you know, I took basketball serious because I worked so hard. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of made me that the way they did us that game, it kind of made me bitter towards certain people, like some of the mm-hmm. authority. And, um, it kind of altered some of my decisions. Like, you know, I might could have to UMES, but because Mm -hmm. I felt bitter and I felt mad about that game and because like my son is a Libra. So we hold on to stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, I kind of feel like that kind of like held me back from some stuff also because of the animosity and Mm -hmm. just the grudge that I held. Mm, That's real. That's real. That's definitely real. And and I'm, I'm glad you used being transparent with that. And, and I want to go back even something you said though, earlier, you know, when you started talking about that senior team about how a lot of those players, first time playing ball, you know, they're trying to find girls to play. And like you said, you could tear, you could have tore those girls down, like what you doing this, but you build them up. And by you building them up and, and being a great teammate, like you said, when y'all didn't play, you know, they was able to go out there, you know, play a decent game, build confidence. And that, that went, towards the rest of the year because even though y'all had some tough losses, y'all were in every game. Like, if you look even at against the North Door Chesters, I'm sure you remember, obviously, against the Colonel, y'all was right there, you know, a couple plays here and there. So, you know, it, it definitely, uh, you know, helped build that confidence. Uh, and you guys ended up uh, uh, having a big uh, playoff win uh, that year. Uh, uh, I think it was Edge uh, – I don't know if it was Edgewood or if it was yeah. a South team. No, it's Edgewood. Uh, it was the Edgewood, Edgewood, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be Edgewood, um, which is a, a a big win. Uh, and I was at that game too. I actually remember. I actually remember that game. I remember a big layup you scored uh, in that game. Uh, uh, I think they tied up, and then y'all ended up y'all ended up winning. I also remember going back a little bit. You play, y'all played North Carolina that year. You had a, a a bank shot with like two seconds left to win that game. Uh, I think that was in Eastern yeah. against North Carolina. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that game too. But uh, you know, so you guys beat Edgewood and then another familiar foe we talked about, you know, you know, Queen Anne's. Uh do you remember anything about that game? I and mean, that was a that was a battle in itself too. I mean, you guys were still right there, you know, a couple of plays away. Um I don't know, like that that game well, I, I got to go back to the Edgewood game so you can mm-hmm. kind of... Sure. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, if you really look at my stats from the Edgewood game, um, it was horrible. Uh, I couldn't, like, make a basket. So it was like, man, like, that team just stepped up because I really mm-hmm. like, couldn't... I couldn't stand over top of the basket and drop the ball down in the basket. Like, that's mm-hmm. how... Mm-hmm. Right. So going into that Queen yeah. Anne game... Um, with the ending, you know, I only had about 13 points that game, like, but the whole game, I just was beating myself up. And then mm-hmm. when I needed to be there, I was there. So mm-hmm. um, I kind of was like wondering, like, would I struggle the Queen Anne's game? Um, mm-hmm. But I, I just think that they just had more power than we did. 
So, um, mm-hmm. that, you know, we ended up losing. Um, I think I fouled out. Like I had like a technical foul or something. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't really remember that game because it, 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 I don't, I guess it wasn't as significant to me as some of the other mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. Like the Edgewood game, mm-hmm. it really got me because I, I had to, it kind of like humbled me, you know, mm-hmm. you know, kind of never really had a bad game. And that's like the worst game you had the whole season. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see your point. But I, I will say, I mean, you, you know, even though you struggled a little bit against Edgewood, your leadership and the little things you did is what helped your team win. I mean, if you look at the development of somebody like Kate Sullivan, you know, I remember her her, her development. I remember, I remember that, you know what I mean? And even looking at her, some of her stats, you know, against Queen Anne's 11 rebounds. But against Queen Anne's, I mean, you went out, though, as a senior should. I mean, you dropped 20, I think it was 28-12. You know, against Queen Anne, so you might not remember that game, but I'm I'm looking at the numbers here. So, I mean, you went out the you went out the you know the right way, even though obviously it wasn't in a win. Um, what do you, what do you remember about the uh, uh, the All Star game? All Star game, uh, you guys beat the South, and I think it was the first time that the girls had beat the South in a while. But luck is a fun game. Um, we had so much talent. That was <laughs> Y'all crazy. was loaded. Y'all was loaded. Yo, the the. Uh, I want. I want to say it was. It was um Mr. Pitts, Robert Pitts, who who coached us that yeah. game. He yeah. he didn't. This is this is this is real. Like me and Mika really didn't know each other, but I knew she was Sharky's sister, but I didn't really mm-hmm. know her. Um, but he how he picked his starting five because he didn't want to say. You know, I'm gonna pick this, 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 and this because it's so much talent. Mm-hmm. So he made us shoot free mm-hmm. throw. So, like, I didn't make it, and um, I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't starting, no big deal. It, but when we got there to the game, Mika gave her spot up, and I, I never understood. I never asked why. I'm just like, like, damn. You know what I mean? Like, it's the All Star. Mm-hmm. Like everybody want to want to shine. Everybody want to show up. And she, you know, she was she was a pure shooter. So like free throws and shit. Like she just bombed them. Like mm-hmm. even three pointers just bomb. So mm-hmm. she was one of the ones. She gave up a spot. Plus some people probably lied about you know what shots that they made. Yeah. But this wasn't who I was to say. Yeah, I made such and such out of such and such. When I didn't, I I gave my actual number. I'm not saying that they yeah. did. But I know everybody wasn't as honest mm-hmm. as some. So she gave me her yeah. spot. She gave me her starting spot. And yeah. I guess, you know, even though we were never teammates, I guess they felt like I should have started the game to give them a push, yep. you know. Yep. So I, it, it worked. We won. And it yep. was like yep. we, could, we couldn't lose. Like we just kind of was like, we beat them kind of like bad. I think, I think it was more than 10 points. And yeah, at some point, like we would be laughing, like we stopped taking them serious and they had a good mm-hmm. team. They had a good team, mm-hmm. but it's like, they didn't mesh. Like, even though we had every single player that was yeah. somebody, like we all evenly had points. We all, yeah. even, you know, had time on the court. Yeah. So, uh, you, uh, you're right. You're right. And it's a, a few things of that because you're right. Because uh, uh, Tan Pitts led y'all with 25. You had 16. Uh, Meek and, and Tara Corsi had 10. And like, and I'm glad you shared that story because uh, Mika always talks about that. Uh, I mean, she talked about this a long, a long time ago when I first met her because she always said that it's no way that the Rand Player of the Year should not be started. <laughs> That's what she said. She said the way she said the way they chose the team. Like it was just unfair. So who, who chooses the things like that? So when well, she she told me about giving it up, and, and she still has no regrets to this day. She always talks about that. And then, like you said, you got you get in there, jump start them, and y'all go from there. Y'all yeah, go from there. So I made like the first four points, six points, or something like mm-hmm. that. I mm-hmm. made the first six points. So mm-hmm. um, I, I just feel like Mr. Pitts didn't want to be like you know what I mean, like yeah, you know, he did. yeah, because. He knew us personally, you know. We've been yep. to a house, yep. we friends with his daughter, so I feel like he just didn't want to do that. He wanted to make it fair. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I agree. I agree. He didn't want to step on the toes. I agree. 
but yeah. but I, I tell you, uh, another another awesome year, completing your senior year. Uh, y'all first team was crazy that year. You you Mika and, and uh, Tiffany Cephas all made the first team. Antoinette Hughes and you 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 elevate your numbers again. You know, so so just for people listening, she went from averaging ten and ten or ten and twelve to seventeen and fourteen. Now she raises to twenty three and, and eleven and a half boards a game. I mean, just just dominant, just dominant. So. Uh, talk about though uh, 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 something that you found out the last game, which I'll go back a little bit to against Queen Anne's, is that you scored a thousand points, and you didn't you didn't know until until they told you. Talk about find out that you scored a thousand points against uh, Queen Anne in the uh, playoff. Um, at the beginning of the year, like once the season had started, um, we had counted, and I was like, I'm let's I'm curious, let's let's count up because I had. Um, mm-hmm. I had a bunch of like free periods um, and uh, I want to say one of those periods, I was Miss Wicker's teacher's aide. So um, during that period, we took all of the books and started counting. And I'm like, I had this, I had that, I had this, I had that. So I'm like, um, dang, it just don't seem like I'm going to get it. I said, I think I'm going to need about 30 some points a game. And so she was mm-hmm. like, eh, maybe, and I'm like, man, I I just like I took it out of my mind. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna score a thousand points. I never thought about it no more. Um, mm-hmm. And I think she counted after that game, or maybe we counted prior to. And I I can't really remember like what was the process. And then um, we ended up counting after yeah. the queen game and yeah. it, it was like wait a minute it's a thousand and so yeah. like she counted i counted again she counted i counted again yeah it was a mm-hmm. thousand and so yeah. like, like <laughs> they, they, you know like how they stop the game and they present the ball like we didn't do that because i didn't know so but yeah. she, she gave me a ball and um because she didn't tell me like what what was going to come with it like she didn't tell me um and she kind of um, at the award ceremony, she she presented me with the ball. So yeah, that was dope. Yeah, they said it, they say y'all kind of a few times to make sure. So yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I had my my jersey that I actually played in. Ah, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Like you say, your, your name's right up there. When you, when you, you know they used to have it in the gym. I don't know unless I've been there, but you used to walk up there and and you used to be right up yeah. there on the. <laughs> It's on the there. banner, yeah, it's still up there, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's there for everybody to see. So that was that was dope to get it your last game like that. You not even you know knowing if you're going to be able to score it much. And I mean that's that's awesome. That's awesome. So definitely a, a huge accomplishment. Um, but I, I want to pivot for a second before I get to uh, you know life at the high school and 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 you know what you wanted to do. I did not know until I was researching that you. Did track and field. You you did long jump or high jump? Talk about uh, it. You made first team. I think I think long jump. I right? did. I did. I did shot put discus. That was. Um, I, I want to say I did this my junior year. I think I started. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really remember. I might have. I might have done it my sophomore year, but I can't really remember. But I did shot put gotcha. and discus the first. The first year, and then I, then I did. I did long jump. Or yeah, I did mm, long. Yeah. Then um, I started doing high jump, but I, I I didn't really have the technique for any of it. It just was something to do, you know, on the raw talent. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. Damn. It was. It was. It just. It wasn't like I didn't break any records or anything because I I didn't really have the skill. I didn't really have none of the techniques. But it just was something I just wanted to do, and I just did it. Um, <laughs> when you say that, when you say that helped, that helped you though, like your endurance and like going to see your senior year. When you say that helped you though, like I, you talked about running and being in shape and stuff. Well, then that helped with that. I didn't, I didn't really do a lot of running in track because uh-huh. of my my activities weren't running based. But um, Got I, I used to after every workout, let's say, um, if I did arms, I would do like the rowing machine. So I would do that. Mm. Or if I did legs or you know, something like that, then I would run or get on a bike. Mm-hmm. But I, I really 
used to like the treadmill and the and the rowing machine. I, I used to do that. But the, that's what built my endurance, not really track. Track just was, um, it just was so I wouldn't be lazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I would be doing something. Um, like, I, I don't know, like, I think high jump kind of, the way I jump, I think it kind of impacted some of the issues that I have with my back to this day because mm -hmm. of oh, how okay. the jump over, like, they kind of want you to kind of like glide over but because yeah I, yeah like yeah. <laughs> i was a power jumper so it wasn't like i didn't have the technique i could just jump and get over yeah but even, yep. even that like i didn't really um i didn't really set no records but i feel like if i would have had the techniques and i would have had maybe another year or two um i probably could have broken records but um my highest jump was like five foot so I, you know i was cool with that yeah, look, you might even break the record, but you made first team. I got in front of me your senior year uh, and tried. So I'm I'm a rob with you on that. One. Anyway, but anyway, anyway. So so talk to me a little bit um, about you know what did you you know because I I mean I know we talked and you were saying that you never you know necessarily wanted you didn't know what to expect with basketball you just played you know but after school what was your mentality I'm I'm, I'm looking and I know that you had some choices possibly like you said you and me s and you had touched on that a little bit. Uh, Bethune Cookman, uh, uh, Cecil, and I know you ended up going going to Chesapeake, and I got to talk about that because I I just the numbers are insane. But I uh, talk about your decision about that. Well, um, all right, let's start with uh, Bethune Cookman. Um, mm -hmm. My aunt uh, lived in New Jersey, and she lived next door to um, this lady. We called her Miss Booker. I don't know what her real name was, but her daughter or uh, somebody, I, I want to say her daughter could be uh, something like that, uh, coached at Bethune Cookman, but, um, they told her about me and, you know, she had info on me, but she didn't have any scholarship money. So because of, you know, my mom was a single parent, I got full financial aid, but I didn't really understand that the money that they were giving me was for two, like each semester. So oh, yeah, I got you. Um, I didn't really understand it. And then I wasn't really ready to leave. Um, I did actually get into Bethune Cookman. Um, but mm. I, I it just was a, a decision that I just chose not to make because financially I wasn't ready and I, I had never been away from home. So um mm. Cecil, um, that coach, he really, really wanted me really, really bad. And I went to visit. I liked the school. I liked the area. It was it was kind of like Easton, but not really like the small, small, small town because, you know, they had like roads. You had to basically drive everywhere you went, mm -hmm. not like Easton, yeah. like we could walk. Um, and I would have had to pay rent and bills. And that was something that um, I just wasn't ready to do. Like um, mm -hmm. I worked. And my money just basically bought me like shoes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really like in that mind frame to be able to be that structured to have to pay. Um, so I ended up not going, but Tara ended up going there. Um, oh, okay. I ended up staying and went to Chesapeake. Um, I, I just felt like I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to leave home. And financially, I didn't want to struggle. So I, you mm -hmm. know. I saw my mom struggle my whole life with raising us and trying to do everything. And, you know, she got this much money. So I just was like, I wasn't ready. I wasn't. And I hadn't been away from my family. So I'm like, I I'm just not ready. This just wasn't for me. Yeah. 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 That's an adjustment, man. Anytime, like you said, you haven't left home and you talking about going somewhere like Bethune, Cookman or, or places like that, you know, I, I get it. I get it. Trust me. But I tell you, I'll say this. I remember a lot of stuff, but looking back at these articles, I don't know where I was doing, where I was at. The number you put up at Chesapeake, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, you, you averaged over 30. Um, I mean, I'm looking at a game, 20, 23 points, 32 and 15. Uh, I put a, I put another picture up too. You had to check that out afterwards. But then, then you had, you had 42 against Essex. Do you remember the 42-point game? You, you was five points from the single-game school record. 
I, yeah. I had looked at it. I said forty-two points, and yeah. I think it was twenty-three rebounds. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, Come on, talk, talk, talk to me. Talk to me. Good grief. Um, I I set the record. Um, the rebounding record up there. Rebound. Yeah, you set your own record, then set another one, <laughs> another rebound. I, yeah. I, I I was averaging my first like five games from the first three to five games. I averaged the rebounding record at yep. five. Yep. Eight at five eight. Um, the forty two point game and and the twenty three. I think twenty three was the record, or maybe twenty five. I can't remember. Hey, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, twenty. I think twenty five. That team was much like the team I had just left. Um, mm. Didn't really have a lot of talent. We had Tiffany C. Uh, not Tiffany C. For Tiffany Sewell. Um, a girl out of Baltimore, Latour Ackridge, and myself. We were the three scorers. Yeah. Um so they they, from Qu- Queen Anne's, right? Yeah, Tiffany was Queen Anne's. The other girl, I don't really, I don't really know what school she came from. I want to say mm-hmm. Milford Mill. Um, but that team, like, we didn't have a team. And so it was like kind of like, hey, you want to play? So some games we might mm-hmm. have player some games we might have six and some games we just had five um oh okay the game that i had the 42 points um one of our players had got ejected which was latour Ackridge. and mm. you know you got this essex team it's loaded you know they got like mm. probably like 15 players and it's four players and we were like like battling and then we just kind of like went ahead of them and when she got thrown out it was like yikes they might come back because it's four Mm -hmm. like they 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 couldn't even capitalize on us having four and they having five because Mm -hmm. coach i guess they tried to uh box me in they tried to put two players on me and Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't really work because I was, I was so athletic and I would just be running it. Even if I was tired, I would still be running. So I just kind of would like get the ball and shoot it. And um, mm. I kind of went through a lot of like scrutiny that, that uh, year up Chesapeake, because I guess some people felt like I was greedy or I shot the ball too much. And I, I kind of like, it kind of like got to me. And I, I asked the coach, I was like, Coach King, I was like, um, do you feel like I shoot the ball too much? And he said, no. He said, who else going to shoot? And I was like, yeah, but I kind of like got a whiff of, um, you know, some talk or whatever. And he was like, man, shoot the ball. So That's I right. did. And my coach told me that. So, yep. it, and it wasn't like I didn't give people a chance because I, I'm always the type to give you a chance. Like, I'm going to pass you the ball. If you're on my team, no matter what, I'm going to pass you the ball. I'm going to give you a chance because if you're playing defense and you running up and down this court, you deserve to at least shoot the ball. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's college. It's a little bit different. You know, it's so all that everybody's yeah. saying, you know, shooting too much and all that. Look, we, we, trying, we trying to win. And like you said, I see your teammates' numbers. I mean, Tiffany has some good games. The accuracy you was talking about, I see her with 19 and, and – but you were just like you said. I mean, you getting thirty and forty two, and like you said, you set the record at twenty five rebounds and had twenty three. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. I mean, I was looking at that stuff like in awe, like wow. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm five, yeah. I'm five eight. The 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 forty two point game, um, I just outsmarted them because the Essex team had six footers and they looking mm. like she ain't doing this. But mm-hmm. the difference between me and them is I jump. They don't. They kind of yeah, yeah. Kinda put the they ball. box and just yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. But not really box because yeah. I'll tell you, all I would do if if they fouled somebody, I would line up on the line, but I would I would be backwards. I would be like this, and and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're here and they're facing the basket, and when the shot would go up, I would take a step and then I would curl in and I would get the rebound. Mm-hmm. I did that like probably like five or six free throws and they could not figure out how I was still getting <laughs> But instead of me trying to push you and out jump you, I just outsmarted you because I went the opposite yeah. way of the way that yeah. you. So I got, I had 23 rebounds. 
<laughs> hit, him with, hit him with that Zep move. Ain't nothing about that Zep move. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's dope. That's dope. And you know how it was trying to battle for boards, you know, you know, behind Kevin Washington crib or wherever we used to play at, you know, with, with the fellas. I mean, hey, it was blood out there. So that was nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> that was nothing. Playing against girls wasn't a challenge. <clears throat> um, not 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 while I was in shape. Um, they, mm-hmm. like no no female was a challenge. No female jumped higher than me. No female mm-hmm. was stronger than me. You know, so mm-hmm. it was easy coming from guys that's gonna block my shot, like knock me down, or yeah. elbow, you know, like in my face and stuff. Like nah, mm-hmm. this females just didn't work that hard. So yeah. I, I really. Yeah anything you know some people have skill and you can't you can't beat that you know so right right that's what's up that's what's up Talk, and, and what does up happening what you know at Chesapeake I know like you say you put up some you know great numbers you know what, what ended up happening as far as our uh, plan and, and going to school um I kind of lost interest with school um I had a winter class and I failed the winter class by like one point and um, then I was ineligible for the last two games or something like that. And um, oh, okay. uh, like the actually that's like when I started like to gear toward the streets because um, the first time I ever sold drugs was to replace money to buy a book for school. Um mm. I don't know if it was the winter class. It was. It might have been. Um, it might have been after the winter season. And like once, once like the basketball season was over, like I just kind of like, like, like missing those last two games that kind of like put me in a slump. Like I just didn't want to play no more. Um, yeah. And and then like coming from poverty and not having nothing and you know i made probably like 50 bucks in like five minutes so it it was like i could be doing that you know so that's kind of like what pushed me there and um it's just like like basketball just wasn't important no more um yeah but even even with and 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 turning to the streets like nobody would sell me drugs nobody would give me drugs so oh, yeah it, yeah like you know Tavon and all of them like we're we're like cousins we're not just friends mm-hmm. you know even though we're right. not related but we grew up together and like none of them would give me anything they was like nah yo mm-hmm. i can't do it and 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 mm-hmm. they held to their guns so i had mm-hmm. went to another route and then like once i started and i you know what i mean like it just, I just went around them. Yeah, yeah, that's real. That's real. And like you said, you know, it's one of them things where, you know, they didn't want to give you anything to, to to look out. But like you said, you like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pivot and go another way at that time. So, you know, how did you end up, you know, transitioning? You know, you talked about getting in it, and and and, and obviously, you know, you might did some things to get even deeper in it, but. You know, what was that sign that it was time to, you know, kind of change, you know, the, the course with that and, and, you know, just be legit with things? Talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, when I came home from prison, um, I did five years in, in prison. Um, one of my good friends had a had a son and I was drawn to him. Like, um, the story is just crazy because... I had me and her had went to a psychic and I got a, a reading, a tarot reading, and, and they read my poem. Well, in the tarot reading, um, it was it 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 was this baby, it was a boy. And she didn't really give me no details about the mother, the father, just that it was gonna be a little boy and I was gonna be head over heels for him. And uh. at the time, like people were having kids, and I'm thinking, well, is is this the one? Is this the one? But mm-hmm. the connections just wasn't like there, you know. Mm-hmm. But when she got pregnant, you, I could just I felt different. And when I first held him, it was like like he was mine. Like I I just had this baby. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it felt like yeah. to me. And honestly, he was 
the only reason like that I, I tried to change my life. Um, because I, I didn't want to not be there for him because it, it, it just, it was put there. Like God put him in my life for a lot of different yeah, for reasons. reasons. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like what got me away from like the streets and stuff and, and really like making my mind up to just, you know, do some other things. That's dope. That's dope. And thanks for sharing that. That's, that's dope. That's dope. So listen, I got a couple more things. I promise I'm going to get you out of here, hopefully in the next 12 minutes. Real Sports Fan Podcast. Got Wandy in the building. It's been a good one. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of, a lot of awesome stuff from, from sports to, to, to life lessons uh, to growing up. Um, I'm going to hit you with a couple more things, and then I, I promise you I'll get you out of here. I got to ask you about uh, your brother Wayne and, and just what he meant to you. Uh, I, I mean, you touched on it, you know, you know, what he meant to me and, and uh, you know, just growing up together and, and all you guys coming over to my house and, you know, just, just, you know, or playing baseball behind the house or kickball or, or whatever. I mean, we just had a great time, you know, and, and Wayne, man, he just had a, had a sweet spirit of bottom and just was a, a, a good dude. Like even, even, especially me being younger, like even sometimes when, when cats, you know, would try to pick on me and stuff like that, or take my ball or something. Wayne was always that one. It was like, nah, nah, nah. Land school, keep it here, you know. So, so he, he meant a lot to me. But you know, just talk about you know y- your brother and what he meant. What um, he still mean. Well, I guess I never really looked at the impact that he had on my life until he passed away. Um, he was always smaller than me, and I don't know if a lot of people knew, but he was he was born with like a lot of um like elements like you know ailments i mean um mm-hmm. he had basically had a half a heart um he had kidney and bladder trouble um those bladder issues and the kidney issues i want to say he had kidney surgery when he was smaller and the bladder issue i guess it kind of like went away over time um but um I was the big sibling because he was smaller than me. Like it's a, it's a picture of him. And he's, he's like, he got a, like a super soaker gun and my, my aunt, Pooch, my, <laughs> she bought that for him. Cause that was our godmother. And um, I was looking like, dang, he was really small and he was way smaller than me. And um, like, I just always felt like, like I had to make sure that he was okay. Um, Mm-hmm. It was it was one situation that was really hard for me. He got in his first fight and it was with Kevin mm-hmm. Warson. And mm-hmm. I, I I wanted to jump in the fight, but I'm like, I gotta let him be who he is. I gotta let him learn from this this lesson. Um mm-hmm. so you know, he 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 was he had his hands, but he was yeah. just yeah, he did. would just like slam him. So when he would slam him, I would break him up. Like, no, no, because I already knew you you already going to yeah. abuse him because you're way bigger than him. Mm-hmm. So that was the only time. But they, after that time, like I said, nobody else is ever going to put their hands on my brother. So yeah. I let him learn that lesson. I let him go through that. And, I, you know, but I, like as far as him sticking out for people, that's just what he did because he he mm-hmm. he, he just believed in what was right. And he knew that if somebody did something to him, he knew that, that it wasn't going to yeah. end like it wasn't going to. But a lot of people didn't really bother him because he wasn't he wasn't that type to just start stuff. I was the right. One. Right. So, uh, <laughs> when he when he passed, I was incarcerated. I was in I was at TCDC and I had received my time and I was the outside trustee. So it was like it was unreal because. I had talked to him on the phone. It was a Saturday night. And that next morning, they like, you got to visit. I'm like, it's not visiting days, so I'm not getting up. And they come like, no, you got to get up. You got a special visit. So I always thought my brother was going to die in like a car crash because he was so obsessed with like speed. And Mm -hmm. um, he died in his sleep. So what I took from that is like how we complain and we take mm-hmm. life for granted when I never remember my brother complaining. And mm-hmm. 
you know, he had a half a heart. So he would try to be normal. And it wasn't until I was older and I started going to the doctor that I really knew what was going on with him. And yeah. our our oxygen level, if we drop below a certain point, we, we start to get short-winded. Um, his regular uh, oxygen level was a, a oxygen level that would have made us short-winded. So mm. like taking all this wow. in and listening to the doctors tell him and me all of this stuff, it was like, dang, like you got to appreciate life, you yeah. know? They, they said my brother wouldn't live past 12. My brother died at 24. So, you know, we can't really be be bitter and and, and sad about what happened because he doubled his life expectancy. Um, sure did. But it just it, like him himself, like he just he just was kind. He just wanted to help people. I just wasn't that person. And um, mm -hmm. him and I were just total opposites. But like his death. um actually impacted a lot of my decisions and the reasons I went to jail because I lost respect for life. Um, I mm -hmm. felt like it should have been me. I felt like he didn't deserve that. You know, I, I felt like he didn't deserve to struggle his life. And this is something that I've never really like shared with people, but I'm going to put it out there. Like I even thought about okay. myself so that he could have my heart. And you like, it, it just like, like I just wanted to make him better, you know, and that's just me being the big sister, the big little sister. Mm -hmm. So it just taught me to like slow down. And even then I still didn't slow down because it wasn't until I was incarcerated that I actually started to process that. Um, mm -hmm. I drowned myself in liquor and just ran crazy just to not think about it. You know, just imagine laying in, on the couch. We still got the same couch that he died on. You know, not now mm -hmm. at our old house. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I would come home and I would just look at that couch and cry. Um, it just, I just didn't feel, feel fair, you know. I just didn't. Yeah. So just definitely just, I don't know, it just taught me to just try to slow down it's just and appreciate life because you know, we take shit for granted that some people can't even have, you know? Yep. You look at people yep. that Africa and you look at the way that they live, we definitely have it way better. And we complain about yep. every single thing. Yep. Yep. Man, I tell you, you, you said it so much there. And, and one thing my, my, my grandfather always says, you know, what, you know, about complaining, he said it never helps. Or, or he also said that it could always be worse. So just yeah. like you were just saying about, you know, about certain individuals, about what they're dealing with. And you're right. Wayne was a person. He never complained. Never. You know, and there's other people I know that are going through different things. You never hear a complain. But like you said, us, you know, we complain because of the, the weather outside or we complain because of what day it is. And just, the you know, little stuff that we do. And sometimes yeah, we don't realize it. But sometimes, like you said, you got to put it in a big in a perspective and be like, OK, is it really that serious? Is somebody else is really dealing with something far greater than me, you know, in, in different places. So, you know, um, I really appreciate you, you know, being transparent, even what you share, you know, about, you know, you know, what you thought about doing, because see, like you said, you wanted, you always wanted to help Wayne, whether it was getting in a fight, even in, even his situation with his heart. So you was thinking, okay, I, how can I help him? You know, uh, but like you said, he lived a, a great life and he did double uh, you know, like you said, posted, you know, posted not live past 12 and, and didn't pass out 24 and his spirit still lives on. And, and like you said, his significance is that even you, you know, know now, like you said, just appreciate life, you know, even more than we might have, you know, prior to that. So that's real, Wandy. I, I really, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, sharing that, you know, about, about Wayne and, and, and the memories that, that we have of him and, and, and I have of him as well. Um, so I, I want to hit you with, with, with this, and then I promise you I'm, I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot on this one. I didn't tell you about this question. I'm going to put you on the spot. But along with yourself, I want you to give me four other ball players, female ball players that came out of Easton for a starting five. Y'all, 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 you know, whatever five you want, whatever error, you and four other people that you would have on your team to take on whatever other girl team, whatever guy team, whoever to compete. Give me four uh, others. 
I'm gonna say Kelly Gibson, Tamara Corsi. Um, um, man, yeah, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Because <laughs> we need some height, but it's, yeah. it's really- <laughs> you, you, you don't want to run the five? You don't want to run the five? Uh, <laughs> you want to run that four? <laughs> I, I guess I'm gonna have to say Lynette and Buffy. Is I feel ah, like ooh, that's nice. I, that's nice. I mean, it, it's, it's some younger players that's 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 you know came after me because I kind of like I'll go to the girls' games and stuff, but um, yeah, I see you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Just, I'm, I'm gonna stick with what I know is 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 mm-hmm. it would be successful. I I like um, Kelly and Tamara's game, even though you know they're older than me. I, I didn't really play with mm-hmm. them. Um, but they they were definitely a a, a duo, so mm-hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. You no, know, I've played Ooh, with tough. and I've played with Lynette, but um, not so much, you know, with Lynette, more with Buffy. Mm-hmm. Buffy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I like. That you, Kelly, Tamara, Buffy, and Lynette. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Buffy actually be on the show uh, next month. Next month yeah. she's gonna come on. So yeah, so that's what's up. That's what's up. Man, I appreciate that. And I tell you, this has been a lot of fun. Uh real good catching up. Uh, you know, we see each other in, in passing here or there or on social media, but still ain't the same as, you know, having a conversation and, and things of that nature. A lot going on. So it's always good to to, you know, sit down and talk to you. Um, appreciate all the advice you gave and, and the transparency and what you shared, uh, even to help people and encourage people. Uh, things of that nature, and also just you know, even talking about the the, the, the female game, because uh, you know, female basketball, women's basketball, you know, still is not getting the support that it really should get. You know, uh, even WNBA is, you know, last year in the bubble, I think it was the highest, uh, I think percentage since maybe like their first viewership since maybe like their first year, or maybe the highest, something like that. So yeah, so more people are starting to watch and, and starting to pay attention and things that because there's some great great players out there i mean you touched yeah. on a little bit with the wnba so awesome awesome anything else you want to share or, or say before we you know before we get off here i just would like to get a moment of silence for and you know just everybody to pray for my family i lost my aunt um within the last week so i i just would like to give get a little moment of silence for her my aunt pooch Thank you. It mean a lot to me. Yeah, 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 no doubt. No doubt. My condolences. Like I said, um, you know, if anything you need, you let me know. And like you said, I'm praying for you and the family and everyone that, that she touched. I know she touched a lot of people. I've seen the different posts and things. So yeah. prayer definitely with you. God's comfort and love. And again, I, I appreciate you, you know, doing this. You know, you, you could have said no. Uh, so I definitely appreciate you, you know, taking the time out and, and being on the show. Yeah, it's no problem. I feel like, you know, a lot of people see me, they might not really know who I am. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's cool, too. But now, you know, people can get a different side of me than, you know, the side that they yeah. might have seen or, you know. So that's cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, giving that, giving that inside track. Because, yeah, I had I had somebody call me this morning, you know, about what you did on the court, you know, not knowing, you know, the stats and stuff. And I was getting up some stats that I didn't even share here. So, yeah, and then, like you said, you know, sometimes – we see people, we might not have a chance to talk and really get to know people or, you know, what, you know, know what they've been through, know their story. And like I said, you really shared your story here tonight and you didn't have to. So again, I appreciate you. Uh, be safe. Like I said, you know, prayer, praying for you and, uh, you know, you just, just uh, be safe and, and, and be good, be good. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other soon. Summertime coming. I'm sure our, our, our paths across at some point. Definitely. Definitely. All right, thank you. All right. I appreciate you, Wandy. And overall, Real Sports Fan Podcast, we out of here. Peace.